This episode of PSR is sponsored by Paul Bogey and thewayof.co.uk. Become a cosmic ninja and learn how to work with and understand your subtle energies. Visit thewayof.co.uk to get started today. Consistent community ritual is such an important thing to help facilitate collective growth, and that's why we do what we do here on Paradigm Shift Radio, so that we can keep in sync and in communication within this ongoing adventure. This is Skull Babylon, and you're about to listen to episode 70 of Paradigm Shift Radio. In this episode, it was a fairly casual conscious conversation circle. In addition to updating everyone on some of the latest community news, we also discuss a November 5th Million Mask March event, what it means to different people, and how we can utilize it as an opportunity to help connect with more people in our local community. And though accidentally not mentioned directly in the episode, it is encouraged that people consider setting up a quote-unquote healing circle prior to and after their local marches with things such as drumming and even singing bowls to help bring people together. And remember, if you are thinking of being in the march, instead of asking what you are marching against, ask yourself, what are you marching for? In addition to the march, we also hit upon a variety of other topics, including the opinions on Russell Brand, the significance of the 432Hz frequency, Phil's experience at a 10-day meditation retreat, and a bit about the new movie Ender's Game and more. Remember, Paradigm Shift Radio is not about being perfect, it's about having practice. And of course, every episode is different, which means that if you want to see a change within the show, then we invite you to be that change by getting involved with future episodes as we continue to create our own media. Support the show at facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Radio and check out the full archive and how to get involved more at ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And also be sure to like the facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central page for the latest videos being submitted by the content creators within our community. Leave your feedback to help us improve the show. Thank you for listening, and thank you for helping choose to be the change you wish to see. Enjoy the show. What does it take to change the world? It sounds like a big question, but it's definitely, it's definitely possible. And that's part of what we're doing here tonight on Paradigm Shift Radio. We are discussing some of the ways, some of the small ways that little things can, the little things that we can do that can make big differences throughout the world. And one of the ways that we do do that is simply by having the conversation so that we can help create new ideas and bring thoughts and conversations to the surface that are going to help us be able to gain a better perspective on the world around us in the first place. And as we develop that perspective, as we begin to shift that paradigm, that's when we begin to see new ways of approaching the things in our day-to-day life. So this is Skull Babylon, a.k.a. Brendan Wolfshield Colton, a.k.a. Skull the Wolf, and you're listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio on behalf of ParadigmShiftCentral.com. And ParadigmShiftCentral.com is a global community of awesome people and awesome individual Paradigm Shift communities all across the globe that are doing what they can to change the world. And one of the big ways that we encourage people to do that, and that's exactly what this radio show is an extension of, is to organize the physical meetings, the regular physical meetups. Here in Paradigm Shift London, Ontario, we always have ours on Friday, and after that, we usually go out and have some shawarma, and it's like a really good social event. Food is always a wonderful thing to bring people together. I was reminded of that on our last meeting, just how important something as simple as food can be. If you're trying to make some new friends, definitely just ask them out for a bite to eat, and it's a great way to just sort of begin to relax and uh, allow like the conversation to sort of flow through, and that's what we're going to be doing here tonight. And with this episode in particular, it is a conscious conversation circle. So that means that anybody can call in and we'll be taking the conversation where people want to take it. Though I do have some particular things I will be bringing up throughout the show at a couple points. And before we actually get into the actual conversation, what we're doing that, just got to give a little bit of community update news, but this is equally as exciting as the raw stuff. And what we are going to get into first what I'm interested in talking about. So people who are thinking of calling, call in in the next couple of minutes and you can be in on on the uh, early stages of this conversation. I'm very interested in talking about the Million Mask March, which is on November 5th, Guy Fawkes Day. And those of you who aren't familiar, it is a intended march all across the world being happening within uh, all sorts of different communities. And it's really kind of emulating, obviously, that famous scene for V for Vendetta, which popularized it based on the graphic novel, of course, with people wearing the Guy Fox masks on mass and uh, what that sort of symbolizes. And uh, so that's something that obviously the anonymous mass has popped up through other aspects and, and sort of developed a symbol in itself. But within its symbol, 
obviously it does represent a symbol of a collective, uh, anonymous, uh, unanimous. But I think what this march will be very interesting is that it will see we'll see the way how I think it's, as much as it's important to be able to establish ourselves as being a part of the collective, we want to still be able to identify ourselves as a unique individual within that collective. So rather than just like asserting to another group, we actually want to be like a group of awesome people that all stand out on their own. So I'm very interested in ways that we can use the uh, November 5th Million March, March mask as a networking opportunity. I think that's what other people um, who listen to this show should definitely keep in mind is if there's a march going on where they are, how they can utilize it to make it into an awesome networking opportunity. And we'll talk more about that. We will talk more about that. So if that's something you want to talk about, um, because I'm going to talk with my admins uh, potentially before it happens. Actually, maybe not, because, I mean, we do usually have our admin video meetings, but we may not have one ahead of time because that is coming up very soon. It is on Tuesday. It's only two more sleeps until that happens. But before we get back into that, just in terms of community news, because that really is what this show is about, it's uh, obviously just to be able to fill you guys in on some of the updates happening around the world and also through the online community. And uh, one of the big things that's super awesome that I'm, I'm just really excited to be able to share with you is that we have opened a new portal a new portal, a new means for creativity to flow through. And uh, that portal is basically what is referred to as the ParadigmShiftCentral.com Video Inspiration Station. And that in itself is a collection, an archive, through the main website that is being created live through Facebook.com slash ParadigmShiftCentral of a variety of individuals throughout the community who are making their own videos, creating their own content, and then sharing it through Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central. So you're listening to Paradigm Shift Radio, and then if you go to Facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central, which I'll post a link for in the chat, and uh, if you go there, you'll see you'll see that there is like a huge selection of all these awesome videos being submitted by so- all sorts of awesome people within the community. And like even just like some of the latest ones, we got some stuff by, uh, yeah, we got some stuff by Philosophical. And Phil, I don't know if he's listening live right now. I'll have a message him at some point. It'd be great to have him just call in. a uh, really cool dude. And he actually made like a standalone mini documentary about what, what he was up to in Pittsburgh. So I just got to give a shout out to that. And you can find that video. You can find this and all the other awesome videos through Facebook, through paradigmshiftcentral.com slash IS. That is where you will find the archive for all this information. So what this is, like this is us like writing our own history book. This is us creating an archive. This is something that not only we can look back at in time, but other people can pick it up at any time and it will be timeless. And people who find out about the Paradigm Shift Central website will have access to this portal, to this place where they're seeing all these awesome people expressing themselves in awesome ways. And another shout I got to give to Kaylee. And I don't know if she is Kaylee Shu. Kaylee Shu. <laughs> um, she, I'll have to message her too because if she's online, I know she was going to potentially call in. But she's making some really amazing videos and, again, just inspirational stuff. And she even gives some really cool tips on meditation. Like she gives like seven – beginner's tips of meditation and we here at Parentship Radio are always encouraging people to get involved with the meditation practice and it's really cool like this it just again check out what she's up to and all through that at um, paradigmshiftcentral.com slash is and I'll give shout outs to the other people real quick shout out to Bryce shout out to Brianna and Genevieve shout out to Sean shout out to Jordan and Kurt and all the Paradigm Shift admins who have been submitting stuff too and shout out to breezy and all the other people awesome people in our community so a long story short of that just to wrap that up if you want to be able to have access to share videos that you're creating with a global audience that's exactly what this is for so part of the inspiration behind doing this that helps motivate people is that they it it provides them with an audience instead of the internet's a very peculiar thing these days it's kind of like wild wild west wiki wiki wild wild west so if uh, people just sort of walk into it and starting brand scratch new, unless they got something like particularly special, like it can be very challenging to build a YouTube audience, a, a digital audience. And, and, and since a lot of work has already been put into this project over the past like three, four or five years, it's been able to function now. It, it's, it's more than ever a function as like a, a community platform for all of us to be able to share our awesome videos through. So, yeah, I'm really excited about that, and and definitely check out facebook.com slash Paradigm Shift Central and invite your friends to the page so that you can help build the audience for these people in our community who are working so hard to provide you with awesome inspirational content. And be sure to like videos on, on YouTube. I'm not sure if people realize that, or at least like posts on Facebook. 
uh, definitely that that is something that that will like cause it to show up more in people's news feeds within Facebook and also within YouTube's separate feeds. Like that's what the likes buttons are for, sort of like boost it within the algorithm. And there are a couple things that I did want to talk about. And uh, again, like I'm not trying to uh, just like drag this on, but this is this is relevant stuff. This is interesting stuff. And um, everybody knows that like every episode of Paradigm Shift Central is different. And a lot of it being spontaneous is just like really like consciousness doing what it can to communicate with itself. So like on behalf of consciousness, I'm just bringing you up to speed on some of the awesome stuff that we have been doing in in this process of like trying to just like optimize and be able to uh, get the message out there, be able to awaken ourselves, so to speak, be able to open up that eye. So the other thing uh, that I was just going to mention real quick is how much we can actually optimize just by people being more aware of how the Facebook algorithm works um, within pages. And on both pages, what you would want to do, if, if you're listening to the show, then obviously like you're interested into the in, in the community and the progress of it. And the thing that's really interesting about this community is that it literally is evolving. Those people, like there are people who have been like following this for quite a while, right? And and those of you who have stick around long enough, you would remember like what it was like, like you know, then and what it was like now. And you can see this evolution. So p- what people want to do, they want to be able to get every single update within the posts that are going up. So that would be such as the radio episodes, the radio posts, and also the awesome videos from the people who are contributing as content creators. So on any page in Facebook, what you want to do, you want to click the button where it says like. So where you would normally just like it for the first time, you click that, and then another drop down appears, and then you click get notifications and show in newsfeed. And that will help bring it more to your attention when people show up. Because if not, like, you have to understand from my it's really interesting because like Ender's Game just came out um, last week and I knew I was really going to resonate with that movie and uh, and <laughs> and that's something I do want to talk about. Um, I, I think uh, Jeff, one of our other admins, actually saw it as well and um, I'm going to be curious to have a conversation with him or someone else about it. But the, the thing that, that uh, within Ender's Game, like what's so one thing among other things is that within the story, there's like an aspect to it later on where like Ender is like the prime like commanding ripple that goes out and then from him it goes to like eight other people and then those eight other people individually like tell messages and give commands to like 48 other people so it's like exponential or whatever so i would love for that to be able to happen within facebook but right now facebook doesn't let that happen it it really cuts me off from you guys as much as we would like to be more in sync so this is how we sort of get around that and it is just like a two second thing that manually gets you uh in sync with the facebook pages because what we're going to be wanting to do we're going to be wanting to I, I would love for you guys to help me as much as you can to promote the other the awesome stuff like just either inviting people to the radio show and being able to share the video content and, of course, choosing to get involved and taking that next step and starting a Paradigm Shift community where you are and check all that stuff through the main website and any of the admins who, who like, once you sort of get the ball rolling, they will tell you it's uh, it's it's quite it's quite doable to, just to sustain it. And really, at the very least, all it is is just you planning to meet up with your friends once a week. That would be like it at its like optimal like potential, and then like from there it's a varying degrees based on location and uh, just like people in general and whether or not you got good shawarma around the corner from you. So, <laughs> but anyways, um, I think that was all I really wanted to mention to you guys. So again, the inspiration station is awesome, and the Facebook algorithms are gimp. So I need your guys' help as much as possible to be able to share. So even if you're listening to this episode now, we're going to get the ball rolling into um, the other aspects of it. And uh, like I said, I'd like to start off talking about the million mass March among other things. And then some other stuff that I had on my list um, of things to talk about. I want (laughs) want to talk about like being psychic with your pets. I know I brought that up in a recent admin video and I just think like the concept in itself is just, it's a very interesting concept, very interesting discussion that can, that can branch out of that. So uh, yeah, if somebody wants to talk about being psychic, being psychic with your pets, that'd be cool. Um, Yeah. I want to talk about Ender's game some more theoretically without giving you guys too much spoilers. Maybe, maybe we'll see. (laughs) And uh, talk about the million math March. And so I know some people are interested in talking about like Russell Brand. Um, we could get a couple opinions in on that. Um, I mean, I don't really have like too much to say myself, but if it is something that people want to talk about, then yeah, that's cool too. So we'll get there when we get there. 
Um, what I would actually like to do first is I was actually just going to bring on a caller who's in a queue. And from there, I'm just going to see what they're interested in talking about. And whether it's the Million Mass March or something else, we'll, we'll get to things when we get to things. Because we've still got plenty of time. Do this once a week. Got about two hours in total and one hour and 40 minutes left. So with that said, again, thank you guys for tuning in. Please continue to share the show. We're going to help get the message out there and just get help help people check out the past episodes too at paradigmshiftcentral.com slash PSR. And oh, of course, if uh, if you guys want to donate, that is greatly appreciated. Think of, this is one thing, okay, last thing I, I just had to mention. Think of, I was thinking about this while I was walking my dogs today, and I think it makes sense. Okay, think of life is like a video game. We've talked about this before. Life is kind of like an MMORPG, and uh, it's also like an RTS at the same time. So think of money in terms of what it takes to sustain like a website. So in this case, it's like website costs, blog talk costs, live chat costs. Like that is uh, like acquisition points. So instead of just like dollars and stuff, think of it as acquisition points. So like once a month, it takes about like 75 acquisition points just to keep things like in check. And uh, I would love if you guys can be able to contribute to that. And if you donate, if you donate like any money to like seriously like anything even if it's five dollars like whatever you can then i'll put you guys in the um upcoming paradigm shift radio plus content which is going to be me like reading audiobooks and i'm still getting around to recording that so one of the first books i was going to read was be the alchemist so um should i give do you guys want me to give you a real do you guys want me to give you a sample <laughs> of, of uh something okay hold on <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, ha, this is funny. Okay, so I just flipped it open to a page, right? Uh, page 28, which is 82 backwards, which is kind of 96, so that's cool. Um, top of the page. My name is Melchizedek, said the old man. How many sheep do you have? Enough, said the boy. He could see that the old man wanted to know more about his life. Well then, we've got a problem. I can't help you if you feel you've got enough, sli- you've got enough sheep. The boy was getting irritated. He wasn't asking for help. It was the old man who had asked for a drink of his wine and had started the conversation. Give me the book, the boy said. I have to go and gather my sheep and get going. Give me one-tenth of your sheep, said the old man, and I'll tell you how to find the hidden treasure. The boy remembered his dream, and suddenly everything was clear to him. The old woman hadn't charged him anything, but the old man, maybe he was her husband, Was he going to find a way to get much more money in exchange for information about something that didn't even exist? The old man was probably a gypsy, too. But before the the boy could say anything, the old man leaned over, picked up a stick, and began to write in the sand of the plaza. Something bright reflected from from the chest with such intensity that the boy was momentarily blinded. With a moment that was too quick for someone his age, the man covered what is whatever it was with his cape. When his vision returned to normal, the boy was able to read what the old man had written in the sand. There, in the sand of the plaza of that small city, the boy read the names of his father and his mother, and the name of the seminary he had attended. He read the name of the merchant's daughter, which he hadn't even known, and he read things he had never told anyone. So that's a little excerpt from The Alchemist, and if you would like to get an mp3 file of me literally like reading the whole book so i mean if you don't have it you just want to like have something to listen to while transporting yourself somewhere transporting yourself somewhere then um definitely just donate to paradigmshiftcentral.com slash donate and i will hook you up with that as i continue to create it and that's one way that you guys can support me doing what i love to do here in central command inside my bedroom in london ontario canada and of course um check out the buttons as well you can always get buttons too and, and that does help support the community as a whole so paradigmcentral.com slash buttons those are super awesome and we'll have to create a whole episode just about button tactics but we've talked about buttons plenty of times you guys know all right so again shout out to everybody here shout out to all the awesome people in the chat and uh, just out of curiosity everybody in the chat Put your location of where you are, and I will shout that out in the next couple minutes. So with that said, thank you guys for tuning in, and we're going to bring on our caller. Caller, thank you for your patience, and um, we shall move forward with things. So again, caller, if you're ready, caller from area code 469, we are going to bring you live onto Paradigm Shift Radio. Here we go. Hello, hello, caller. Hey, what's up? 
call. Hey, is this is this Jeff? This is Jeff from uh, Paradigm hey, Shift, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Right on, dude. Right on, man. Sorry to keep you. <laughs> sorry to keep you on hold there forever. <laughs> oh no worries. I'm right, I'm used cool. to it. <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. All right. Well, Jeff from Paradigm Shift, Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, one of the many awesome Paradigm Shift communities that is out there, and doing things and getting stuff done and changing lives. Uh, among other things, let me just ask you how you're doing and also just ask what's new with uh, Paradigm Shift Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Well, uh, thanks for asking. I'm doing well. And, um, yeah, I was calling in to give some updates. So what's new is we're having meetings uh, every Wednesday. And uh, basically we're having them at the Earth School, which is a really cool place Um uh, for you to uh, basically go uh, train your mind, read from the vast books of, or vast uh, esoteric library, uh, um, angels. Uh, they have all different kinds of books there. Uh, they also have a holistic uh, store. Um, and then there's also classes where you can learn uh, Reiki or you can do Tai Chi or um yoga so uh cool man. The, uh yeah it's a pretty cool place so uh we've been having those every wednesday after reiki class and uh i uh trying to hook you up with the owner uh castle hill i'm not sure if you got his request or not but uh uh he was wanting to talk to you uh because both of you are very like-minded and uh, maybe a future show or something like that. But, uh, yeah, man. you know, we have buttons in the Earth School, so uh, half of the profit goes to the Earth School, the other half goes to more portal buttons. So <laughs> Portal buttons. <laughs> Perfect, man. That's that's great to hear, and 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 to um to to your friend, I apologize to him and to the whole selection of other people on my Facebook who I haven't replied to, but I kind of <laughs> go through my friend invites one at a time, kind of thing. But yeah, no, I I think right. um definitely, especially with your suggestion, the fact that you think uh, it's a good idea means it's a good idea, and something will come out of that. So I look forward to to having an episode with with our new friends there so sweet man how long how long has this place been around then um it just opened in july so it's fairly new oh, to the area fresh um and, and how is it like you know how is the community sort of taken to it because i mean obviously like this is the kind of stuff that i would love to see more of you know i would love to see an earth school in, in every city so to speak you know oh uh, well it started out slow you know there's classes between 10 to 15 people but um you know, it's starting to grow. Uh, the word is starting to get out. Um, the owner is just an honor to be around, uh, an overall great person. And, uh, you know, spirit really talks through this guy. I mean, real down to earth, uh, wants to help other people. Um, there's all kinds of holistic stuff that you can get, uh, toothpaste without fluoride. I mean, you know, all kinds of good stuff there. Cool, man. Yeah, that does sound good. So for anybody who is in the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas area, feel free to check that out and get connected with the community at facebook.com slash PSDFW. Stands for Paradigm Shift Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. And check out the website for the Earth School at Earth Schooled with an ED, so earthschooled.com, and you can check out their stuff there. But again, I'll include that in the show notes as well. But yeah, man, I think um, I think that in itself, like going, you know, in theme with like how do we change the world, community centers are so key. I, w- I would love to, uh, yeah, I would, there's, I mean, there's stores and stuff where I live, but nothing quite like that, what you're talking about. And I would love to be behind and get involved with the creation of, of something like that locally. And it, and it has been it has been talked about. So I'm happy to hear that you guys got that and, and you're utilizing that space. Well done. Happy to hear. Right on. And uh, you wanted to talk about the Million Mask March. I'll probably yeah, be going uh, Tuesday. There's one going on in Dallas uh, at City Hall. Uh, it's late in the evening, so I'm going to be very careful on my way out there because I have a little mm-hmm. technical difficulties with uh, you know, tickets and stuff like that. So I got to be careful. Are you bringing your dog? 
Oh, uh, Chewbacca? Yeah, I'll probably pick him. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a Chihuahua? Like, is that what it, it is, breed-wise, or is it? Yeah, it's a long-haired Chihuahua. Long-haired <laughs> Chihuahua, yeah, yeah. Chewbacca, the long-haired Chihuahua. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. But yeah, man, okay, so moving the conversation towards the topic of the Million, man Mo- Million Mask March, and uh, I'll remind people, too, uh, we have no one else in the queue, so please, if you have any ideas and, and input that you would like to share on this topic, now would be the time to definitely call in and just remind everybody, you can call in through Skype, and um, you can call in with a regular phone. If you're using a regular phone, call in through 347-539-5493. And uh, there could be a long distance charge on that. But if you're calling in with Skype, you just click the Skype icon in the live link for the episode, have Skype already launched, and then click that icon. And then it'll be like, are you sure you want to make a call? And then you click OK. And that's really it. So you're not even paying like Skype. And Roscoe just said uh, Russell Brand. Uh, yeah, I know, I, I know Roscoe. Something about him. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's pretty obvious that he's with the Illuminati, so... Well, man, like, I mean, long story short with Russell Brand, um, yeah, like, that's kind of, it's... <laughs> I mean, personally, I, I think I think he's I think he's a pretty rad dude. Like, he, he would be a guy who I would, like, love to talk to. And, and down the road, it's not impossible to think that he couldn't be a guy who we could have on Paradigm Shift Radio along with a lot of other uh, well-known, recognized names of people out there doing awesome consciousness shifting stuff. And just to plant a few seeds... Um, Looking forward to having Alex Gray on the show whenever that works out. So I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's scheduled. I'm just saying I got a feeling it will happen eventually. So that'll be a cool one. But um, yeah, so for for me, like the Russell Brand thing, but I guess just uh, since Roscoe wants to hear about it, and Roscoe wants to call in, I guess he could. Um, I mean, it, I, I think he's a pretty cool dude. Um, obviously, when that video of him and doing the interview with what's his name, that British reporter guy, went out there, there was a lot of opinions, and one of the opinions that you can check out. And uh, I think I can find a link to this, actually. I do have it up, in, or you can just Google it. But, um, yeah, basically just, like, connecting. It's like, it's like, is, like, is Russell Brand, like, part of the Illuminati? And it's like, here he is giving <laughs> devil horns. Brah. Here he is giving a handshake to the queen in a peculiar way. And then just, like, other stuff. And, and at the same time, it's not to say that um, he's, like, not perhaps being puppeted in some way or another. It's it's such a peculiar thing, man. Um I think one of the if you want if you want some good opinions on that, I would redirect people actually to redicecreations.com, which is quite a well known site and uh oh man, I'd love to get more in sync with them actually. But redicecreations.com I know they um have some sort of insightful articles uh somewhere or another. And recent, they got some other awesome interviews and everything too. So yeah, definitely big shout out to RedEyesCreations.com. If you enjoy, if you enjoy Paradigm Shift Radio, um, check out Red Ice Creations because like that was what I was like listening to back in the day before like I was inspired to do this. So, but um, I, so okay, so what's my opinion on Russell Brand? Um, I mean, again, it's just one of those things like who's to say, but I think what he is doing is still like part of consciousness doing what it takes to wake itself up, like at a very base level. So it's not a right thing or a wrong thing, but it's, uh, I guess, where the value comes in is just observing how people respond to it, opposed to just getting caught up in your own response. Like you should almost observe a situation like that, something that's like outside of yourself that much. Like is Russell Brand changing your reality? Not necessarily. Something like that you should observe like without measurement, so to speak. And, and and be more aware of how other people are responding to it, opposed to like trying to just decide on one single reaction, one single re- response for yourself. So that would be my two cents on that or other stuff. But yeah, Jeff, what what do you think of uh, Russell Brand? I mean, he's very uh, intelligent when it comes to uh, speaking. You know, as far as you know, Definitely, the corporation, yeah. the government are wrong, and that's. That's a key point to hone in on, not, oh, it's Russell Brand, but what is he speaking about, actually? So. Yeah, exactly. Like, what is he speaking about? And there, and that's the thing. Like, there's some sweet videos of him just saying, like, you know, like, there's that what? It's like 20 seconds, and I can't quote it exactly, but, you know, it's just like, yeah, if I were to paraphrase what, what he's talking about, he's just, you know, he's like, you're like an infinite tendril of reality forever undulating towards the realm of evolution and great mystery, and you're awesome. Like, that's what I heard. So, I mean, he is an intelligent guy. He is an intelligent guy. And uh, it's interesting um, when you look at the movies that he's been in. Because when you look at, 
that's one thing that I'm really interested in, and, and it's kind of come up in the show before, and it's kind of like this term known as like synchromysticism, so to speak. But it kind of has to do with symbol symbology that appears throughout media and throughout like movies, and how different actors sort of fall into similar archetypes and portray um, particular roles and stuff. Like uh, uh, examples would be like guys like Jim Carrey, and uh, and and just how like those people do sort of like they they seem to be like conscious in their own way like Jim Carrey is a very conscious guy too that's and that's another guy I would love to have on the show too so just putting that out there yeah, um, but yeah uh, I mean I, I'm not going to branch off into too much but I will give a shout out to youtube.com slash soundless dawn everybody listening to this definitely do yourself a favor and go to youtube.com slash soundless dawn and check out the videos that the guy made there and I'm going to potentially have him on the show in the future as well and that would be awesome but uh yeah, so um, Russell Brand is a he's an, he is an intelligent guy. He's definitely he's definitely not an idiot. Um, and I'm excited to see what he continues to do. And it looks like he's having fun, and that is a very important thing. And and he's definitely got good intentions. I would say um, if he is trying to like accident, if he is trying to. You know, I I don't think he's trying to distract people. Like he is trying to wake them up, and uh, and, and he can be thought of as a bit radical in doing so. But I think that in itself is what makes it stand out, and that in itself just kind of like segueing us back into the conversation of the November fifth million million mass march, and how that in itself can be thought of as something radical. But how it is seen that you need. Sometimes to wake up the people who are apathetic, you need to like shake them just a little bit and, and not even in like a violent way or anything. So um, segueing to, to that topic, uh, Jeff, what, what are your thoughts and, and uh, just in general on like the Million Mass March and more so importantly, what would you march for? So um, one thing we talked about this last Friday in our group for our Paradigm Shift London, and I'll just mention this before passing it off to you, but that was a big thing that I brought up, this idea that instead of people going into the march thinking, what am I marching against? Think of what mm-hmm. am I marching for? What am I standing for? And and it's just, it, it shifts that mindset. It shifts the paradigm. It shifts the reason why you're there. Um, so, yeah, right. I, I would just ask you that same question to ask yourself. What are you standing for when you go to that march? Yeah, I mean, I definitely would stand for, you know, uh, transparency with the government. Uh, more uh, specifically with the Fed, uh, how, you know, the banksters are basically, you know, they get all the interest and then people that are going to school for college and stuff like that or people that want to get a home that have never had a home can't get a home because, you know, of all the corruption. So I think that that's really important as far as, you know, uh, interest rates, you know, for the government versus interest rates for the people. Mhm. And do you I mean in the, in the thoughts that I mean obviously like what what do you hope to be achieved from this march for yourself like personally or just as a community? Um basically that you know until we act then we're not going to be heard and unless you know we act upon anything then you know basically what you allow will continue. So you know, I would like to see, you know, something take take place, you know, whether, you know, even if it's just some arbitrary things at first where, you know, we'll have meetings and those meetings will facilitate, you know, uh, better discussion for, you know, better rates for people that are at lower incomes, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, for myself, what what I definitely hope comes out of, like, an event such as this march is, is not even, like, what, like, I, I want to see what happens right after the march ends. I want to see where, like, people go after that and, and what they do, like, the days after and stuff. Um, there will be, see, it, it, there's a lot of different ways to look at this march, and obviously it, it, what you want to avoid is the idea that you don't want people, like, showing up and creating this image that, to the media, it's just like, oh, this is just a bunch of, like, angsty teenagers or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. But 
again, like, is it within a, an individual's power to, like, prevent that from happening? Like, uh, not necessarily. And then you get into the, 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 like, topic of, like, provocateurs, people, agent provocateurs, people who are in there who are just, like, the guys who wear a mask and throw one brick just not to get mask. it riled <laughs> up. Well, I, yeah, them and themselves are anonymous and stuff. There's, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to jump too much into the the whole conversation just yet because um, actually we got to got to back step a little bit. Um, Roscoe has uh, called in on the queue and he still wants to talk about Russell Brand, so we're just gonna go. Okay. We're just gonna create like a side portal here and do a barrel roll and uh, bring Roscoe on. Roscoe's uh, admin for Paradigm Shift Dresden, Ontario, Canada. So Roscoe, can bring you on. Here we go. Up, Yo, guys? Roscoe. Hey, man. How you doing? All right. Good, dude. Thanks for asking. Okay, so you still want to talk about Russell Brand? Is that the case? Well, I just kind of <laughs> wanted to point out that, like... Go for it. <laughs> well, he's just like a regular, like, dude. He just has an opinion, and he has the ability to go on TV and say what it is, and that's what's so awesome to me with him. And yeah. not only that, he has, like, great debating skills, so, like, no reporters can really, like, touch him, and it's awesome to watch his interviews go down. Like, it's that awesome is... to watch his style. That is, yeah, like we said, they can't touch him. That is true. I guess that's what's going to happen. He's just going to go. He's going to go from like network to network. I want, has he been on CNN before? I wonder. Like, has he talked yeah. to Larry live? Oh, that CNN. Happen? I'm not sure, but okay. So that that's going to happen someday. We can look forward to that then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah. like, did you see the Westboro Baptist Church interview he did? I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Westboro Baptist Church or not, but. Oh, I did, yeah, because he he does like his own his own show, and uh, yeah, yeah, I did actually, yeah, and they were just like talking about like homosexuality and stuff, and uh, yeah, no, he yeah. Does. go ahead, but they you're right. Um, Russell, I don't know if you, you can say it on the radio, but Russell Russell Brand fag pimp, and right? I, don't know, I thought that was funny, and everything they were saying was the word of God, and he holds up the sign and says, "Yes, you can find this in Corinthians." Russell Brand fag pimp, but. <laughs> Jeff, anything to add on that? Oh, I mean, I, I've seen the his interview, um, but I, I really like his 45-second one where he, you know, basically says what is the ultimate truth, and, you know, that's, I mean, he, he very, he very uh, eloquently puts his speeches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's amazing to watch. Yeah, that'll be cool. I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to have to keep tweeting him bit by bit and over time you know just gotta keep that fishing line out there and uh man i would love to i would love to sink sink past with russell brand that'd be awesome so putting that intention out there for sure cool because then like you guys can call in and we can just like be like be, it would just be like this but with russell brand here <laughs> so to speak oh, man. all right well okay uh go ahead roscoe oh <laughs> um, man i was just gonna say i don't even know what i'd ask russell brand man like I'd want to I'm hear sure his opinion on so say. many things, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see where he's at. So hey, interesting Russell to Brand. hear his thoughts on uh, the Venus Project. Yeah, yeah, that and among, among many other things. But yeah, so Russell Brand for President 2014. Let's see how. <laughs> <laughs> he, if he, he doesn't run, then Ron Paul. Like, like holy crap! <laughs> Didn't think that was possible. Okay. Uh, so, unless anybody else has a, it's something they want to talk about on Russell Brand, um, sort of segue back to uh, the March talk or whatever. Uh, Roscoe, did you have um, were, did you have any intentions for that day? Do you know if there's anything going on in Dresden? Uh, definitely not in Dresden. There might be some things going down in Chatham. I'm not sure. More happens there than I expected there to. But yeah, I would definitely march for labels on. Monsanto products that would be my main <laughs> thing. Yeah. But Definitely. I'm always trying to be in low. Well, Roscoe, I will say, I mean, given the fact that you're not too far away, if uh, you, Stephen, and Mitch want to head up to London for the day, feel free because it might be worth just like being a part of that if you're not too sure about Chatham or whatever. Use the extra bodies. Yeah, man, that sounds good. Cool, man. Cool, I'm cool, sure Mitchell's he's always uh, just hanging around doing nothing anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds productive. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, doing doing nothing is a lot of is a lot of something when you're. Well, he gets a lot of uh, reading done. He gets a lot of meditating done. <laughs> that's he's, what uh, I mean. Yeah. He's, that's he's what, a pretty that's real work. He's, he's a pretty chill guy, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Word, man. 
Yeah, I, I'm interested. I'm really interested to see what what happens within London. And um, something it's been coming up time and time again. I've had multiple people kind of talking to me in conversations about how particular London, Ontario is. I mean, for one thing, you think about the fact that it's called London. So it's like the micro of the macro of London, UK. And in some sense or another, like <clears throat> for the Queen... If when the day when they were building this back in the day at, at the turn of the century and stuff, it was also the idea that the London, Ontario could be a place that should the British Empire fall to some threat, some enemy or something, that the monarch could just pick up their stuff and come to London, Ontario and just like start again from there and like pick up from there. Because Canada itself is it, it, at that point, it more was like officially like a colony still under the Queen. And uh, now we're more of a separate country, but I'm sure we're still like, we would probably still have to do something they tried to make us do. So there's probably some sort of crazy like leash still attached to us in some way or another. But yeah, that very, wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah, but it's very interesting. Just um, especially when you get into the idea of ley lines and uh, the grid points throughout the earth, and and how like particular places have particular energy that in some ways could be like thought of as almost an ingredient to increase the potential for novelty to happen, so to speak, kind of thing of like how Terence McKenna talks about it, and um, even the idea that. A lot of people, I've heard this from a few places, the idea that the Masons, uh, the Freemasons, are very interested in London, Ontario. And I'm not even saying like that like means too much because, I mean, the Freemasons can be thought of in a lot of ways. And I think in a lot of ways, they're just like even a group of people who are working together to help like see the best of their community. And uh, the Masons themselves can be thought of as just more like a group of men helping support each other and, and and at some point or another also probably talking about things like astral projection and getting into like conversations about higher consciousness and uh, you can get into stuff like that and I'm sure like I would imagine that's what they do but in, in itself um, yeah so the Masons are very present throughout London, Ontario, Canada and our mall is even called Masonville Mall um, which kind of like makes it incredibly obvious it, it, at that point, you're just like, huh? But like, it's kind of like hidden in plain sight kind of thing. But again, I, I, I'm what's going to happen in London, I think, is going to be a micro of the macro. So is something cool, is something good, is something like unique to a degree in a positive way can happen in London that could be seen and and potentially shared with the world. So for me. Like without even having like too much pressure or anything, my intention is to document what happens at the march in London and to also be able to think creatively ahead of time of different ways that we could potentially influence it, even through simple things such as like having uh, like some of the shift signs, some of the free hug signs or some of like the two person thought provoking shift signs that we have as well and bringing those into the march. The idea of like even just kind of organizing teams within kind of within the march but then it brings up the conversation of uh whether you're like even wearing masks and stuff but again so just kind of ending my point there um yeah i'm, I'm really excited to to document part of what's going to happen within london ontario canada and I'm talking to people i'm gonna i'm gonna last point i was just gonna say i was like just to clarify i'm gonna be talking to people on camera ahead of time at the march and i'll just individually be asking them and collecting a montage and i'll be like be like so like you know like what are you marching for so i'll ask them that right and then i'll collect like a montage of that and then my plan is to just edit that in with like the sequence of the march itself and then to uh, tag on a thing and get like a five minute news story out of that and those of you who are familiar with my journalism style like that's kind of what i'm doing here again this is me using my abilities my superpower psychedelic superpower superpower abilities of journalism to <laughs> do what i can so we do what we must because we can is uh an interesting thing so anyways um i'm gonna stop talking for a bit um, <laughs> roscoe go ahead I know you guys well you brought up a good point with the uh, the mass it's illegal for us to hide our face in canada okay. now so oh. what do you think is going to go down See, yeah, like that's something that it's it's really gray on. Um, just bring people they up to speed. Shouldn't make an exception, you think? I mean, they know it's going to be like a big event. They know there's going to be a lot of people there. They should just let them wear masks for that day at least, because there's no point in, you know, stirring up stirring on, up the pot when they don't need to, right? Depending on who but, you ask, um, the, that law is uh, slightly misunderstood in the sense that. Um, so again, just back second step, back step two pieces, like. 
in Canada, there is a new law that says that you can't wear a mask like during a protest. But within that, it means that you can't wear a mask during an illegal assembly. Um, and then it gets into the idea of what defines an illegal assembly and will the march be considered an illegal assembly? And if so, will everybody in the march technically be um, there? You know, will the police have a reason to like start pulling people away? But then at the same time, the police are like not the bad guys. And I think in some cases, like the police would be able to make the intelligent, intelligent decision to just like leave, not start arresting people, knowing that like here in London, we traditionally with the within the last marches that we've had, like things usually go fine, like things are pretty fine. Like that's if I think it's I think it's awesome if like police can actually just really be there, not even to like restrict the march, but just be there for like safety and be able to respect the people's right to uh, express themselves and. You know, yeah. at the very least, like the rally is like a morale, community morale boosting thing, and uh, yeah, networking also. But uh, you what guys do you think? don't have to worry about Department of Homeland Security, so I mean, <laughs> that's a good thing. There's quite a few things that we don't have to worry about, which is good. But honestly, we do get like a lot of the, the treatment that Americans get gets passed over to Canada, believe it or not. So, mm-hmm. but we're yeah. lucky on some stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping that they're not going to throw us in jail because we're uh, peacefully protesting. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Well, <laughs> but I'm... at the same time, yeah, I, I guess, see, that's where this march is really particular because when you look at the recent marches, there was a march against Monsanto. So, I mean, we knew what that was about. With this march, it's just like a march for the sake of marching in the sense that there isn't just one thing. So if someone on the side of the street came up and asked one person, what is this march about? And then asked, like two or three more people they would get a bunch of different answers and theoretically they would be like more confused than what they were when they first had no idea what the march was so but i think if like that should be what the message getting out to the media is and i'll try and wrap that up into uh like the news piece that we're doing out of this that i'll make it from the video that i that i'm going to put together and and that is that this march is like a chance for people to express like their voice and and to be able to just get like this collage like this smorgasbord of um yeah i don't know it's it is it's it's a tricky thing man it's a confusing thing and and i'm hoping for the best um yeah but at the same time like with crazy stuff in america it just seems un it seems very very unlikely that not a single brick might be thrown considering the frustration that people are dealing with these days. And then what happens after that brick is like, you know, kind of up in the air. If you guys know what I'm saying. Yeah. A lot of people will probably be marching because their food stamps, uh, they took those away or they reduced the amount that they're going to get. So it'll be a bunch of diff- different reasons. And oh, Obamacare. So, yeah. Obamacare. Another one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fill up I don't know big one this year. Yeah, yeah, hmm. exactly. Yeah, I was gonna say fill fill in the light. He says that he's gonna march for frequency reform. Currently, the standard A vibrates at 440, which sucks because research it yourself. And 432 hertz is the universal vibration. So, <laughs> talking about like marching on behalf of sonic geometry, <laughs> I think that's, nice. that's man. That'd be totally <laughs> something to do. But yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, obviously it's not, you know, focusing on the negative doesn't really, it, it's it's okay to acknowledge the possibility that anything could happen. Um, what I'm definitely interested in is ways that we can use a march like this to connect with the people uh, within our community. And obviously, like, that will have to take place, like, before the march. Um, and, and that's, like, the thing that's tricky about this, because, you know, if you're there and you're like, I'm, like, standing for environment, like I want to connect with the other people who are interested in local gardening and building greenhouses and environmentalism and, and things like that. And then if everybody's wearing the mask, it, for that person in particular, it can be uh, very challenging. So it's, uh, yeah, like it's just interesting how the masks are like just uh, very double-sided in terms of them helping but also limiting in some ways and how we can dance around that. So any ideas you guys got? I hear you. Well, just like it's fine to wear a mask, I think, um, maybe like on a YouTube video representing it. Um, but that's only because like that's the that audience. When you're out on the street in the public, that's a totally different audience. And yeah, you're right. Like the mask mm. doesn't really 
help the cause, I think. I I mean, I would love, yeah, I would, I, I would ideally, I would love, I would love for this, for an aspect of this march to occur where a young child could look at the march and be like, mom, like, what is that? Like, that's cool. I want to go like march with them. And in order for that to happen, it would require things that would, would be like attractive. So, I mean, I, I even had the idea of going back to the idea of sort of having teams within the march. So even if there's like a big march happening within your city, theoretically, if you're listening to this radio show, what you could do is plan to have like a small group of three, four of your friends. And then you guys decide that you're going to march together and maybe hold like similar signs or even do like free hug signs or the, the signs at paradigmsdecentral.com slash tools. And like, I think I would love to see that. Like, if anything, if this episode can be used to coordinate people to be able to hear about this in time and then take out some of the uh, shift signs just to bring those out there and to be able to get those seeds planted. So just thoughts like open your heart written on a two-person sign and then having people see that and making it large enough for cars to see. And whether you wear a mask, it's totally up to you. But again, I would love to see even just like people dancing in the march. So you have like music playing and stuff and you can have like sort of like drums and, and like a good beat going and then just like people like free flowing, like dancing and just like artistic expression. And that's where I think that at this point, like everything in life, stuff happens so that we can learn from it. And with this March, it will be a learning opportunity. And what I would love to see is like more sort of, you could almost tr- imagine like this a, a March slowly transforming into like a parade almost. So it's like a parade for like gardening and, and just like dancing and artistic and expression and stuff. Because I mean, even to use the term march is kind of like playing into the energy of what the system wants us to do. So you get like this like mili- quasi military thought pattern that in some ways can sort of also be like confusing and stuff. And, and it sort of adds to this like idea of needing to like stand up to protect and it can also lead to aggression as well. So um, the, the fact that it's called March. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, if you guys got other ideas and any other callers, feel free to call in and we can keep talking about this a bit more. There's a couple more ideas I want to run past. So what do you guys got to say? I'm only going to be wearing a few buttons and uh, possibly you signs, uh, like the strategy yeah. that you were speaking of. That's my plan is to um, have a bunch of the shift buttons to give to people. So, like, the people who I interview on camera, I'll give them shift buttons. And then I'll also do, like, free hug stuff and get people the buttons. Because, like, for me, that's totally – I mean, for anybody else who has a paradigm shift community where they are, utilize the march to get pamphlets out for your next paradigm shift meeting. So simple so effective so you can get the templates for that through the main website um or just message me on facebook and i can make one for you real quick or organize a meeting if you haven't done that yet but just have that because i mean that's it's the consistency that that makes a huge difference for community it, it's it's not just having a march like once every half a year it's like the cons- the more frequent the more consistent within a, a one-week cycle is like what can determine um, just like the acceleration within the community and how much things grow. And that's exactly what, you know, we're trying to promote here among other things. So, yeah, um, again, I, I'm not trying to hog the mic. Um, I just want to, there are like quite a few ideas that are, that are ideas worth sharing. And definitely just like for people, again, thinking about getting involved with the March, whether you're a Paradigm Shift admin or not, you can even just download like the regular Paradigm Shift <clears throat> there's like one there's pamphlets that are just for like the website and the radio show it's not even relative to a local community and you can print those off as well and uh, someone in the live chat is asking if there's anyone in Toronto there's a paradigm shift community in Toronto but it's not super duper active but there's going to be a lot of stuff probably happening in Toronto as well so yeah yeah um, yeah anyways give me a couple seconds to think if you guys want to talk I think there's something else I forgot to say because I was too busy talking so it happens <laughs> Well, we can kind of segue into Ender's game. I'm uh, <laughs> that's idea. what we all really are <clears throat> talking about. Is you know, if doesn't nothing does change, then you know, stuff will severely go downhill. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that they're talking about doing as far as like a possible gl- uh, the grid X or the blackout on November 13th, which uh, I think Barbara was talking about it. What but, is uh, that? So say that again. There. Yeah, that's new to me. Uh, 
they're supposed to shut off the entire electrical grid of the United States or, you know, have like a media blackout. Uh, they're going to shut the it down. States? Yeah, only in the United States that I know of. Uh, okay, like, are you, you're saying that you're going to turn off all the electricity? What's going on here? Yeah, they're supposed to shut it down to test it, but I mean... Well, that's what I'm saying. I think like, part of this half routine. of the country's power grid is in Niagara Falls, and I think that if they were to shut that off, we would get shut off too, like the area that I'm in anyway. I could I yeah. could be wrong. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. So, damn. <laughs> Okay, I mean, it's so something in the future to think if, about. I mean, if, if this that were actually, to happen. If this is actually, like, a real scheduled event, opposed to just an article on the Internet. So, But that that's a very definite thing. It's either going to happen or it's not going to happen. So I guess we'll find out on November 13th. But at the same time, I'm not one to really get, like, paranoid about that stuff, but just to have that there as an idea. Because, I mean, even there's a lot of stuff, like, people um, were... Like, did you guys see all that stuff? There's just... I remember there was just like a lot of apparently there's always hype, but there's a lot of hype around October saying that like the end of the world or just not even the end of the world, but just super crazy stuff was going to happen in October. Like, did did that happen? Right. Like, I we survived the 17th of October. <laughs> I guess that would yeah. fun. Like, what was I mean, supposed to happen on the 17th of October? I'm sorry, but this I, is interesting. That was when uh, our national jet. That was when China was basically owed the money from us. Um, you know, our national debt. Yeah. But nothing oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the technical name but being the uh the Illuminati October Surprise was something that people and again, like if you uh, so if you YouTube Illuminati October Surprise, you'll see there's like a bunch of videos. But I mean, that in itself, like I don't think that was just like an actual thing. I think that was just people picking up on kind of they're just like, holy crap, there's a lot of like messed up stuff going on, and if this messed up stuff keeps going on, then it seems like we're at sort of a, yeah. the uh, the eschaton. We're at like that like point of no return sort of thing. But yet we keep we're, we're still going. Like we're still going. Like I mean, I know a lot of people sort of like felt that. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? There's like a lot of people sort of feel that there's like no hope and stuff for the world. But I think the fact that like we're still going, like there's definitely hope. Like for me, I'm not planning on the world like going crazy, like super duper insane just yet. Like I think, I think, I mean, I'm working with the idea that I still got a good few more years left here on Earth before I like go to another planet. But if and when that happens, actually, yeah. What was my date? I think I said by like maybe 2020 or something. If I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna stay on Earth until at least 2020. And then if there is, like, an off-world option, I would go after that. And, but then I could always come back. So, yeah, theoretically. <laughs> could be, like, a Stargate. So. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah there's a lot be... of sites out there that are fear-mongering, basically, like, you know, take it how you will, you know. If it doesn't resonate with you, just don't take it, you know. It's basically, it's information that needs to be disseminated, and, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. Mm-hmm. Roscoe, did you say? Uh, I'm like really depending on uh, modern medicine, modern day medicine to keep me alive. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, that helps, man. I'm counting. One thing that we haven't really talked about on Paradigm Shift Radio is just like transhumanism type stuff, like robot, cybernetic, reality oh, augmentation, like and just like how singularity, singularity, like, like, transmutation into a robot. Yeah, yeah, man, RoboCop style. But like way better. Yeah. No. Like yeah. Like a hundred times better. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> that's what yeah, I. Man, that's I what I'm that. marching for. I'm like marching the on November fifth for like robot augmented reality. <laughs> <laughs> like, I will totally join you in that, man. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. So uh, Jeff, did you have something to say, or else I was just going to talk about some like crazy. I. I mean, I just. If we're just kind of letting the conversation branch where it is, because honestly, like, I'm fine with just wherever things kind of go. It's pretty casual. This episode is not, like, as, like, high-strung as some of the other episodes. But, yeah, I got a cool idea I was going to share with you guys. But if anybody had any other ideas, no, uh, other transhumanism, uh, you know, thoughts. I'm sure we'll eventually talk to, about Ender, Ender's Game, and then I just wanted to give one more shout-out to Earth School. <laughs> Sweet, man. Uh, you can find it on Facebook, Earth School Enterprises. Uh, it's a 
really holy and, and an honorable place to be. But uh, awesome. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, whatever topic you had lined up. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess um, to put in uh, just a bookmark on the uh, November fifth March. Um, one other thing I was just going to mention uh, is it was just another idea in the sense of like you know why are people wearing masks and stuff and, and we also have to keep in mind that for some people the masks for themselves are a security thing it, it was a simple idea that I heard a guy mention was the idea that if he's going downtown wearing a mask he doesn't want to have to like walk by his workplace well not having a mask and then people seeing him and be like da 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 you know and he'd rather just have the privacy of being able to do it anonymously and 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 I and I and I think and that does make a lot of sense as to why people are, are attracted to the mask idea for for that reason among other reasons but Roscoe Jeff thought on that well I was going to say plus it's it's just fun to wear a mask man and if you're doing something like that you have to have fun at the same time right yeah another yeah, used to wear a mask <laughs> and I know exactly. there's a I know there's some people that are taking it upon themselves to get like creative and decorate their their Guy Fox mask, which I think is a very cool idea. So, <laughs> I mean, I, to be honest, I I haven't I have not intended I have not set forth the intention for myself to personally wear a mask. Um, if I do, I would prefer it to be a modified Guy Fox mask. But I already have like a mask to begin with, just by like the uh, regular like ninja attire that I wear. That's like my half mask that I pull up, and then I just have like my like goggles and stuff which turns into a mask so but yeah um, but masks masks are cool man like yeah i think there there is like this definite attraction that we just sort of have to them even just like i mean even just as kids and stuff i think it'd be cool if, if people were just like instead of the guy fox mask it's just like wear whatever mask that is like an honest expression of yourself and then people just show up with like all sorts of crazy masks and it'd be super cool <laughs> that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> All right, yeah, was true. Just putting it out there for any additional thoughts. Um, okay, so we do have another caller in the queue, so I'm gonna bring them on just based on how this works. So if anybody else wants to call in, we can bring them on. And uh, we've got four people in the circle now, and that's totally cool. And um, so yeah, I mean, we can talk about the November 5th stuff more if it comes up. There is still a few more things to discuss on that, and uh, I'm sure we'll talk about Ender's Game at some point in theory. <laughs> So, caller from area code 443, we are going to bring you onto the air. Here we go. Hello, caller. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, caller, can you hear us? Oh, this is, uh, uh, I didn't know I'd get in so quick. Anyway, um, <laughs> no problem. yeah, I was thinking about, uh, in addition to um, free hugs, but also at a music school, like, all music schools um, are tuned to, you know, A440, but I, I've been talking about this A432 uh, stuff, and, uh, um, well, gee, that's an idea. I mean, I could play music in the background that's tuned to 432 just so people have the direct exposure to it. Cool. And, uh, is this Phil? Oh, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. That explains it. <laughs> Phil loves his sports me too. <laughs> yeah. That man, yeah, totally. Um so sorry, what instrument would you be playing with? Well, I I was thinking about just having a big speaker with some pre uh tuned oh, okay. music um people could listen to and have a big sign that says this music is tuned to four thirty two and then um you know, blasting people and then seeing their <laughs> you know not blasting them you know just having having some up tempo music and mm -hmm. uh educating people about it cuz music schools would be the best place to do it obviously because people there actually know what you're talking about <laughs> so this by the way is a 512 hertz um tuning fork that i received by a very light being that i met in a Grants Pass, Oregon. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Phil, I was I was going to say, man, since since we do have you on the air, I'd love for your, you to just inform us, inform the listeners uh, a little bit more just about 432 in general and, and like, why it's something that is uh, universally so important. Because um, it, it, ha it has to do with uh, this, this uh, nine grid 
like there's certain numbers that we use to measure everything that are not arbitrary. For example, 360 degrees in a circle, 3 plus 6 equals 9. You divide that, you get 180 degrees. 1 plus 8 equals 9. Uh, like 1 plus 8 plus 0. You keep on dividing that, and you keep on getting sums of 9. And um, the same thing with the uh, music grid. P Pythagoras came out with a grid that has to do with... Um, all these numbers adding up to nine, and uh, it has to do with vortex-based mathematics and basically thinking in concepts of infinity. Uh, I, I suck at explaining it, but um, it, it's basically all centered around the three, the six, and the nine, which is what Tesla was talking about. He says the secrets of the universe could be understood uh, if if you just and, um, Wait, say say that again. It actually glitched out when you said. <laughs> oh, uh, Nick Tesla said that the secrets of the universe could be understood if you just understood uh, the secrets of the three, the six, and the nine. And uh, it, it also it, it's like it's the universal language that one must understand in order to understand technologies that have to do with like levitating stones and stuff, like. Coral Castle in Florida, um, Edward Lead Skelmine or whatever, he, he built single-handedly this huge stone structure place that is uh, really awesome. <laughs> um, and that's probably what the ancients used to build all the monoliths throughout uh, the world using like vibrations and stuff. Roscoe, Jeff, you guys heard about that that idea, like using levitation techniques to build ancient pyramids and stuff. I have. Um, um, makes a lot of sense. Go ahead, I Roscoe. I don't really have an opinion on it. I watched like the whole story of it and like firsthand accounts of people leaving and coming back, and like with one person with no equipment, he was able to move so many tons of stones by himself. And yeah, I don't know. I can't explain that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really have too much of an opinion on it. It is fascinating. Yeah. But. Phil, do you have do you have more um do you have more of an explanation as to like how exactly someone would levitate an object using sound? Like what process or if there's a machine or a device that they had to create or how do they do it? Or was it just like Professor Xavier style? My well, bullets. They they uh some kids who were uh looking to see how he was moving these stones said that he had these tools that looked like ice cream cones that he was using to place on the stones and then lift the whole entire stone. And uh, they, they were looking at some sites in South Africa or Southern Africa, uh, all these different, like, ice cream-shaped tools that they use in order to move giant stones and whatnot. I don't know exactly how it works, but my theory is that people are able to use their own frequency to basically project this universal energy into the the area around them. Um, that's my theory. Also, yeah. in Go ahead, John, to my understanding of 432 hertz, um, I've been doing this for about four years now, and... Uh, when I first did it, I tuned my my guitar to A432, and immediately I was like, oh, this makes so much sense. I feel so much different and better and stuff. And then the thought to convince other people who don't have the ability to feel what's going on on the inside, to feel their bodies with, with uh, equanimity and object, objectively, um, I, I've found the science of cymatics, which is the ability to look at sound by placing sand on top of, like, a cardboard and with a speaker under it that's vibrating at a specific frequency. And when, when the the tone is, like, going up, like, and then it gets to a specific frequency, and it makes a pattern in the sand that's on the cardboard. And when it's solid... It's solid with the tuner that's tuned to 432, and I was like, I, I made a video, and I showed that on the internet, and um, then people have made 
much better explanations on YouTube since then, but um it's fascinating. Yeah. Not before too, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I remember when I was um doing a lot of research like back in the day and just how much I was impressed by cymatics and how much it just really uh helped me understand like how how much of like vibration actually does create form. Being able to see just those experiments with it, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Have you guys heard of Greg Braden? No. Yeah, uh, man. Oh, yeah, Greg, definitely. You probably Greg have, Braden. actually, Phil. You probably have. I mean, he's fairly... Uh, yeah, it's funny. I know um, Barbara is with us in the live chat. She was trying to sync me up with him, which is something I would still love to do, get um get a guy like Greg Braden on the show, actually. I think that would be wonderful. So put that intention out there as well, also. But yeah, no, go, go ahead, Roscoe. Tell, tell, um, explain people who who's Greg Braden. Well, basically, he was has like very similar uh, talks about vib- vibrations a lot, and, like love and fear, like base vibrations. Um, I can't really explain like that great of terms, but that's what Greg Braden's for. I mean, <laughs> go watch one of his YouTube videos. He puts it into like basic terms. He gives you the, like examples, like. Basically, what he's trying to say is, like, here is, like, maybe not the scientific terminology behind it, but here's why you need to practice love. And here's mm-hmm. why you need to practice hate. And this is what's going on when you're not practicing love. And this is what's going on when you're not, or when you are practicing hate type thing. And mm-hmm. Yeah, he just puts it into great terms. So he almost yeah. makes you, like, realize that, like, just by being in a good mood, just by... You know, at least trying to get through your day without complaining about something. It's like, literally, it's better for you. It's healthier for you to live that way than walking around, like, complaining all the time and, like, thinking, oh, why me? And, like, having these dark, like, whatever type of thoughts. You need to just be positive, like. And it's not that hard, people, <laughs> honestly. But, yeah. Yeah, check out Great Britain. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Greg Braden, um, I remember listening to his stuff back in the day, and, and he does do that. He does do a good idea of just, like, among other things, uh, using a scientific explanation style that does just explain, like, how we can actually just, like, create with our thoughts and, and the ideas of vibration being able to affect matter. And, and definitely, I mean, it's easy to sort of think that, you know, it, you're a lot of people just be like, oh, you know, like in order to get through, all I have to do is like put food in my body and go to sleep. And, you know, the body self sort of like maintains itself through there and, and obviously like exercise and stuff through there as well. But we also have to be like conscious of the thought diet, if if that would be the right term that we are creating for ourselves and the thought habits. Um, yeah, no, go ahead, Roscoe. You got something I, I can... I'm just going to say like stress literally kills people. I mean... <laughs> Literally, and you yeah. are the one stressing yourself out. Like, you can't blame it on anything else. It's you. So if if you're feeling stressed out, you need to like figure out some way to live more positive, more happy. Because like, it's literally knocking you like years off of your life if you're stressed out every day. Yeah, I know. Um, but Bashar, uh, <laughs> who's another person I would love to have on, uh, Daryl Anka, um, who channels yeah. Bashar. Um, I know in one of the things where where he's talking, and 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 again, this is one of the earlier things that I heard. Like this is like I heard this back in like probably like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, probably. Um, that was like when I was really just starting to get it. He talked about how yeah, people. What's that, Jeff? Yeah. He's pretty wild. It's like. He is Bashar. Bashar. Yeah, Bashar. <laughs> Good day, humans. Ah. <laughs> Bashar's hilarious. Um, so anyways, what, what I was just going to say, uh, he, he actually just explained how if you if, if you are happy, you actually, like, age less. Like, because yeah, yeah. fear is a slower vibration, it, it affects the way that you actually, like, move through time. And I think when you're, like, passing through time with a higher frequency, it's actually, like, less resistance, so to speak. So when you're lower, you're kind of moving through it slower. But then through this process, not only do things feel longer sometimes, you know, it's a simple idea of time flies when you're having fun quite literal in the sense that if you're having fun you're actually like aging less within the time that you move through that space if that makes sense no it um, totally does yeah yeah um cool yeah, right. I thought of, uh, it reminds me of like people always have this question who are 
in these deep, you know, states of of negativity or whatever, is how do I get out of this negativity? There are many options out there, but one thing I've found um, throughout my journey is this meditation called Vipassana meditation. Um, it's it's You learn it through 10 days of silence, and the course that you go to is free. It's, it's all supported by donations, and they're pretty much all throughout the world, um, these courses. You, you can go to them and forget about the world and just, you know, s- stick to this... Um, learning of this technique, which is basically what Buddha taught. It was observe the breath. Once that gets sharp, you take that observation to the sensations Once uh, around the, the nostrils. Once that gets sharp, it goes all throughout the body. And then you're able to observe the whole entire body with objectivity instead of subjectivity, no longer creating um, aversion or craving towards the sensations and thus once you're able to have this awareness coupled with this equanimity, you start pulling up all these um, reactions, these these sedimentary reactions that we have developed within us throughout our lifetimes and past lifetimes and whatnot. Uh, I I just want everybody to know that this is a, this is an option that's out there. Um, you can go to the website, which is dhamma.org that's d h a m m a dot o r g and uh it's free so check it out <laughs> i actually signed up for that but they deny me just because they didn't there wasn't enough or people had already signed up they'd already approved too many people and the next one was like way too far out i didn't sign up for it but i really wish i read up on it, it was like a really long read and yeah yeah i think like there's there's some places in Ontario that do the the retreats like that and for like ten days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think I I know some people that actually did that. Yeah, no, I think that's a very um, life changing experience and definitely develops like a lot of like willpower. Um, I, I, I'm curious. Twelve, 12 hour a day meditation. I mean, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like Phil, I, I'd, I'd actually like to hear more of just like your experience on that. I mean, what was it like uh, for you to be able to have to um, like recognize and observe uh, the like your like I said like your willpower? I mean, did you find at some points you just wanted to like get up and say screw this, or and, and if you did, did you <laughs> well, work? How did you work through that? It was kind of like. A spur of the moment, it was like I had a friend of a friend who was going to it, so my friend signed up for it, so I signed up for it three days in advance. And it's very rare that somebody who signs up so early gets in, but, you know, a lot of people who sign up uh, cancel, so I got in that way. And this was in California at the um, North Fork Center, which is, I think, the first one that started in North America. Um, It was super awesome. Like, I had no idea what meditation was, though I've already had the seed planted that I should learn how to meditate in the past. Um, So I went to it not knowing what this thing is about, but the thing is very non-sectarian. It's it's not religious. There's no idols anywhere. It's just here's the meditation. It's helped so many people throughout the past 2,500 years of this planet, and it's Ever since um, the the guy's name is Goenka, who, who brought it to the West and throughout the world, he he found it from um, it was in Burma where this technique was preserved for so long, and it started to spread out um, from this guy who's Goenka, who just passed away recently. Um, the, the the way the technique, um, well, I think I already explained the technique, but there's, um, I didn't know that it would be so beneficial <laughs> until I did it, and then I was like, wow, I, I didn't know I had so much willpower, and I, I got really deep, and then uh, I went again. This was the age of 22. I'm 27 now, and a lot of things have happened since then, but I've just come back from another 10-day uh, course, with my girlfriend, so now we both uh, meditate every day, one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. And wow, good job. Take the practice into the the real world. It start you start seeing these benefits, like your awareness of all these diff- these you know 
places where you would have reacted in a negative way, you you now feel the sensations and you're like, oh, yeah, I'm feeling this way. I can just observe it. Okay, cool. It passes. You, you find out this this uh, experiential wisdom of anicca, which is uh, impermanence, which is part of the three noble truths. The three noble truths are um, there is suffering. Or Huh? Four? Oh, yeah. There are four. Did you find any coins? I think so. You continue. Carry on. The first one is that there is suffering in the world because of all the different sufferings in the world. But, you know, suffering from having something in the world and uh, not having something in the world. You know. And then the second one is um, impermanence or egoness, or egolessness, which is anatta. And the third one is permanence, and I think the fourth one is the the way out of suffering, which is this technique. But from from that, I I went to many courses in my early twenties, and I got really deep. Uh, but then you know life happens, and I became like a, a pothead hippie who traveled around with a flute, and uh, it, it led me to this really deep. Um, Experience. I think somebody has has heard of uh, Kundalini awakening, where reality oh, yeah. just starts melting. <laughs> you're just like, oh my gosh, this is what really is, and everything is illusion. But everybody's God. It, it's hard to explain, but it's you basically talk about it on, on many occasions, especially with the the DMT episode. Um, uh, the, the, it, it brought me to a, an unstable point in my life where I basically, for two months, was a a crazy shaman uh, bordering on schizophrenia, and uh, this all crashed, and I was in six months of deep depression, and I couldn't get out of it. But luckily, I just came across somebody who uh, had DMT, and that that reset me, and then I was I was back on my feet, and I was on the road to um, happiness again. And at that time, I was so far out of practice with Vipassana that I couldn't just, you know, observe the sensations again. So what I did was I started chanting a mantra. Um, it was the Hare Krishna mantra and also Om Namah Shivaya, uh, Om Gam Ganapathaya Namaha, and uh, a couple others like uh, Ramadasa Sate Soham. Whatever, I, whatever it was... Um, that that brought me back to a state of progression. I was progressing, and that led me to the 10-day that I just came back from, which was uh, about a week ago. Um, now I'm practicing Vipassana every day, and I'm making leaps and bounds. That's awesome, man. Yeah, good job, man. That's a, that's a wicked testimonial for just, like, what the mind can do and, and what what you can do when you sort of, like, put your focus on something. And, uh, yeah, like, I guess I, I, I'd like to hear you just kind of, like, talk a little bit more about that. But I would also like to put forth the idea of, uh, Phil, would you be um, willing able to lead us into a group meditation for this episode? Sure. Sweet. Cool, man. Now, I was actually thinking... Um, in terms of like audio tracks and stuff, um, there's like sort of stuff that we've used in the past, but there's also the idea of just kind of running past myself, the idea of like literally just like going into silent mode and uh, doing that. What would we, I, I, what do you think? Would silent yeah. be relative? I, I can teach the anapana, which is the observation of the breath, and uh, yeah, sure. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so, okay, we can do that in the next couple of minutes then. Uh, just to clarify in terms of uh, how that would work, I guess, uh, you, are you cool just kind of like walking us all the way through the meditation and then would you just like leave us in silence for uh, a couple minutes after that and then bring us back? Would that make sense for you? Yeah. Or do you, yeah? Okay, cool. 
Cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, we'll uh, like I said, we'll get there in the next couple of minutes for people who are tuned into the show. And those of you who are new listeners, um, it, it's an awesome thing to be able to practice group meditations live on air. And uh, whether it's in the front of your mind or the back of your mind, just being able to like use that as a chance to collectively direct intention out into the grid and just uh, project love at the very, uh, very basic and simplest idea and help align ourselves with incredibly awesome realities that are ahead of us. So, um, but yeah, like I, I mean, Jeff and Roscoe, do you guys have maybe even like a question that you might have for Phil? No, uh, not really. I mean, the Four Noble Truths, the Eightfold Path, and then the Five Elements of Reiki. It's just the Fibonacci spiral. Once you start studying one, you just you know keep going. Just want to learn more and more. <laughs> and let's cool. manifest the right intention and. Uh, uh, go ahead, Roscoe. I don't... Okay, I for like the 10-day thing, um, I'm like pretty much a pack-a-day smoker. So you think I'd like start going crazy throughout the first 10 days or do they work with you on something <laughs> like that? Or um, after the first two days, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great way to learn how to stop smoking. <laughs> well, 10 days. Yeah. 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 You can do it, man. You can do it. Brother. Yeah, Ross, that'd be easy, man. That'd be a, that'd be awesome. That'd be a great testimonial for the power of meditation. Well, that's the only thing I could do when I went there was like otherwise everything else. Every other people wanted to do it. It was that one part of me that was going. Yeah, you're gonna go crazy because you're not gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Alright, well, if you do, make sure uh, make sure you get some of it on film. So. Oh, Roscoe goes crazy at a meditation retreat. <laughs> anyway, um, was there. Uh, okay, I'm just, Phil, is there anything just in general that you just want to just share with the audience, just in terms of why something such as meditation can be valuable in today's day and age, and why, why all the kids should be doing it? So. <laughs> uh, because it's it's something that can never be taken away from you. Uh, it's with you wherever you go. Um, you always have this ability to go within and build the wisdom of observing the noble truths of the universe, which is impermanence. Uh, it's it's so you can, you know, spring happens and you are elated, but you realize this is impermanent. And then winter happens, and you're like, oh, it sucks, but oh, it's it's impermanent. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like change is the nature of the universe. There's um there's a wonderful quote um in the movie Troy where it basically just talks about how the gods envy us because we are mortal and because we are mortal, like we can also die, and because things are impermanent, we are beautiful for that same reason. So I was just kind of like, yeah, definitely, definitely, man. Everything, everything comes into this existence and like fades out of it. It's a natural cycle of, including the breath itself. So, um, with that said, I think we're about ready to segue ourselves into the meditation. One other thing I was just going to mention, because uh, I brought it up earlier in the show and we didn't get back to it, and that was um, asking the shout-out for where everybody is and where everybody is located. And I'll just give that list now from what we got. So keep this in mind. Doing and just think about all the different people all over the world tuned in live. And in addition, all the people who are going to be listening to the show in the future. And of course, share it on YouTube once it's up there as well. But we got people all over the place, including people in Ottawa, including people in Washington, Northwest Indiana, Miami, Florida, uh, Wonderland, <laughs> Chatham, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Shout out to their Paradigm Shift community in Jam Pants. And Stanford, Connecticut. And what else do we got? Da, da, da. That might be it. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I guess that was all the people who respond to that. So cool, cool. And then, of course, who's in people. Wonderland? I want to go there. <laughs> who's in Wonderland? Uh, I'll give you a direct answer for that. Uh, where was it? Oh, I lost it. There it is. Oh, well, I'll goes, find uh, it. Um, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Good answer. Cool. All right. So, um, unless there's anything else, Phil, uh, feel free to mention anything else. But at this point, I'll mute us 
and then Phil, I'll uh, just have you open and then let me know when you want me to mute your microphone and then we'll go into silent mode for the meditation and uh, then we'll come back from that after a couple minutes, so to speak. But take your time with the uh, breath and the awareness leading up into it. That's definitely a very important part of it. So, guys, I'm gonna, is that cool with you, Phil? That makes sense? Yes. Perfect. All right, so uh, I'm going to... Well, What's that? How long will the uh, how long will the period be? We'll uh we'll sync it up. Okay. You know, silent period. Silent period, I mean even just like minimum three minutes. I mean, give or take, I guess. Whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't want to try and put like too much restriction on a meditation, we'll just see where it goes. But yeah, giving us enough time to be able to work with the instructions that you're gonna be providing us with. So again, I'm gonna mute myself. So I'm gonna mute Jeff and I'm gonna mute Roscoe as well and we'll bring them back afterwards um if you guys want to disconnect your phone and call back save yourself a couple of minutes on the uh hookup or whatever but anyway so i'm going to mute myself so phil thank you very much for doing this and uh phil will post your your facebook into the show notes as well so people can get connected with you further and again thank you for doing this so mute myself here we go get comfortable all right friends The longest journey starts with the first step. This first step is going to be observation of the natural breath. That is, observation of the sensations that happen around the nostrils, outside of the nostrils and inside of the nostrils. Just observe the natural breath, starting now. When you notice that your attention has gone away, bring your attention back to the sensations of the breath, the ingoing breath, the outgoing breath, and try to notice that the outgoing breath is slightly cooler than, or the the outgoing breath is slightly warmer than the incoming breath. The monkey mind. Okay. Now let's start. Good. Good. You may take rest. You should try to do this every day for 10 minutes and grow with it. Um, Eventually you might actually have the opportunity of being able to go to a 10-day course and you will be able to experience the full technique, which is Vipassana. This technique is called Anapana, and they teach it in the first three days of the course, which is the prerequisite for learning the Vipassana, so that the mind is sharp enough 
in order to go deep within and make this mental surgical operation. And then on the tenth day, they teach um, another technique, which is called metta, which means loving kindness. And that is for five minutes after the one-hour meditation, you focus on feelings of love and sending this vibration outside of your, your body, loving all beings with the thought, may all beings be happy. The uh, Pali word for may all beings be happy is bhavadu sabva mangalam. And he says this three times and then everybody says sadhu, sadhu, sadhu and bow. And uh, that's that's the only tradition in it. Um, but it's uh, it's a tradition that I like because who can argue with May all beings be happy. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks a lot, Phil. That was that was very very cool and very uh, the simplicity of it. I think is what makes it also very effective. Like you said, a meditation technique like that, as simple as it is, is very important for sharpening the mind, reminding each other that the bare basics of that practice is to this when your mind wanders, be able to accept that it does that naturally, but then to be aware of the conscious choice that you have within any second to bring it back to the point of focus that you consciously choose at that moment in time within that present moment. So mindfulness meditation practice like that, as simple as it is, is like very effective. So if you can do that during the day, that can definitely like ripple out into your day to day life, just in terms of like your awareness, your ability to like focus on tasks, focus on even just like emotions of other people and just be able to sink yourself into the grid a little bit more. Definitely. And then to, use that as a tool to go deeper into yourself so cool thanks thanks phil i'm gonna was there anything else you want to add i'll bring on jeff and roscoe in a second um i guess the only thing i want to add is uh i believe that organize is a very effective way of making the space around you more cohesive and uh i've learned about organize from that uh Spirit science video on crystals, and ever since then, I was like, "Oh, I want to make organite." Oh yes, organite is awesome. So, organite it's just crystals and metal and resin. It, you basically take this this liquid resin that hardens after you you put in a hardener and you pour it onto crystals and metal, and th- this forms a piezoelectric field which takes the discordant energies that are produced by cell phone towers and various electronic devices around the house and converts it to positive energy. Uh, that's my dualistic way of explaining it. I, <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. All right, well, I'm going to bring on Roscoe and Jeff. Roscoe and Jeff, can we bring you guys back on? All right, w- welcome back, you guys. Thanks for still being Hello. here with us. Um, anything that you guys want to talk about, or should we should we talk about like crystals and stuff for a second and and organize? Actually, because there, there is one thing that I could. Um, if you guys want to talk about for a second, I need to find a link. Hold on, keep talking. Whatever. Just, just jump right in there. Hello. <laughs> that was a great meditation. Thank you for that. An honor, Phil. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad to be able to share it. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. What, what? One thing. Um. One thing I, w- I was going to mention. Uh. Unless unless we got other topics that we like specifically want to talk about. So, um. People in the live chat. I'll put this out there first without even like putting an impression in in the waters first, or just to you guys on the in the in the call with us already, uh, audience and everybody else. What would you guys be interested in learning and hearing more about within the last 13 minutes of the show? So I'll keep an eye open on the live chat there, and uh, I'll put that out again to to you guys as well. Anything else that you want to talk about? Knowledge you want to share? Synchronicities you want to talk about? Or anything? Hmm. 
Everybody's just so quiet movie, tonight. Uh, <laughs> like the movie too, Gravity. So. Oh, I think it's the or Ender's, Ender's Game. <laughs> oh, and more Ender's Game. Oh, Ender's Game. <laughs> Uh, I feel sorry for forgetting to talk about Ender's Game. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so Ender's Ender's Game. Jeff, uh, you, you, I saw you were just kind of like responding to one of the posts that I put up. Just, uh, what, what did you see Ender's Game as, like symbolically and like archetype wise? What did you get out of it? Well, I mean, there was a lot of different topics in there. I mean, but I mean, basically the compassion, the ruthlessness. The friends and enemies, uh, you know, basically how they were, you know, your greatest enemy, uh, you know, you have to, in the end, love him before you destroy him, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a fantastic movie. (laughs) I don't want to, you know, go into any of the plot, you know, things or anything, no. Yeah, it's hard. You can talk about the plot in general. (laughs) Uh, takes, I mean, the story itself, based on a book um, that takes place in the future, and in the future, Earth got attacked by these like aliens that have their own spaceships and kind of swarm, and they're similar to insects, and uh, they're trying to be able to like attack the home planet to get rid of the alien invasion like straight up completely. And part of the way that they're doing that is that they created like a military training school to be able to find the Adult. ideal mind of uh, like literally just like one soldier and then like other soldiers as well. Um, to be able to strategically beat the enemy. And uh, one of the interesting things um, that came up theme-wise within the dream, um, oh, no, i got to be careful. I don't want to spoil it for people. It's hard <laughs> to talk about. But it has to do with dreams, and which is why I want to talk about um, the idea of like information coming through in dreams. So that is something that, that does come up, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I mean, definitely like um, that movie. I think it was really cool. I gotta double check and see what people are saying in the live chat in terms of what else people want to talk about. But I do think, um, I kind of mentioned earlier, there's a lot that I could resonate with just in terms of uh, like even just ro- like roles relating to leadership and and not just for myself, but how like any of us just as individuals within our own lives and just uh, in particular as like admins for paradigm shift communities and and what a difference can make through good leadership organization and, and how it is like it's definitely like a learning process in itself too. So um hold on guys, just Think keep about talking. It. I gotta keep looking. Go ahead, Jeff. Battle school is kind of like you know if you think about it like this, we go into meditations and, you know, they were going to battle school to become the best soldier possible. You go into meditation to become the first the best person you know, possible, or you're the highest and greatest good. I mean, you think about it like that, and, you know, you can learn so much by going inside and learning about yourself. Mm-hmm. I guess, um, Phil and Roscoe, are you guys planning on seeing Ender's Game by any chance? I never even heard of it until today, to be honest with you. But yeah, it huh. sounds... Yeah, definitely. Cool. Where's and then um, the mind game, also, without going into detail, you know, was another huge part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was, like, talking about without being able to talk about it. So, <laughs> um, so I'm not really seeing too much uh, that people were suggesting in terms of talk about... Yeah, um, Eckhart Tolle's Milton's Milton Secret that. movie's coming out. I don't know if that interests anybody, but... but what's the deal on that? Eckhart Tolle's um, Milton Secret. It was like a picture book for kids that he wrote, oh. and it's they made it into like a full length movie. I think the kid in the movie is a little bit older than the kid in the book, but yeah, the whole movie is just like one great big positive Eckhart Tolle message. So definitely something to check out. Cool. Will that be like animated or will it be like live actors or? No, it it's like a legit. Yeah, it's like a legit film. Yeah. Like not not animated, but oh, they even like went as far as like when they made the film. I guess the company or whoever's putting it out wanted them to change a bunch of stuff, um, but but they felt it was going to take away from the message of it, and they like refused to change anything in the movie because they didn't want to take away from the message at all. So that's kind of awesome too. That's awesome. Sweet, yeah. Eckhart Tolle is definitely doing like he's definitely very much about personal transformation and how changing ourselves will make that ripple effect to change the world definitely definitely 
which is what yeah, we're yeah. what we're doing here. As tired as some of us may be personally, like I know, like I'm I'm back, <laughs> like I'm tired at this point. Um, and I'm sure all of us who have been working hard are pretty tired, and, and that's why we got to remind ourselves to make sure that we get get some good sleep tonight. And uh, unless people really want to, um, probably we'll keep we'll have the paradigm shift after party hangout, but we'll see we'll see where that goes. I know I need to get some. sleep. Um, but yeah, what, uh, did you guys have anything else that you want to put out there? Because we literally got like eight minutes left in the show. So to audience and to uh, you guys here on the call with me, anything else that you guys just want to use this time to bring up, talk about, plant some seeds? Um. <laughs> like this is how tired we are. We're like. <laughs> Do I have anything to say? Like, hmm, let me think about this. <laughs> and like, well, are you guys uh, tired too? Is that? Am I reading that? I am. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can sleep. Yeah, yeah. Time to rest, recover, rehydrate, and then follow the eightfold path: the right view, the right intention, use the right speech, the right action in our marches the right livelihood, the right effort, the right mindfulness, and the right concentration. Mm. With that, we will win the Ender's game. <laughs> yes, it's all a test. It's all a test to prepare us for like the next test that lies ahead. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, just going back to the idea of the march, absolutely, if people uh, who tune into this show regularly are taking part in a march in their local area, then of course we encourage you to just be there to stand for love, be there to stand for community, be there to stand for free hugs and uh, the positive things that will make a difference and, and definitely like imagine, visualize like a bubble of like love around you and then just like carry that with you and try to connect with people, try to talk to people, take some paradigm shift pamphlets with you, uh, order some buttons, but they won't get there on time, but there are going to be future marches where buttons are going to be very useful tools. And yeah, just, I think be excited, um, but also just be reserved at the same time, I guess I would say. So, and definitely encourage people to connect like afterwards um don't just be like passive in the sense that you're just there to be involved in the sensationalism behind a march like definitely ask yourself what can you do to help your community and uh part one of that is just like getting to know your community so hang around and talk to people and uh don't feel like you got to be behind the mask the whole time so yeah that's a couple more thoughts there you guys got anything? Awesome. Yeah, get involved. It's your community. You need to do something to make it better. And, you know, open-ended uh, invitation. Anyone wants to go to battle school, you know, in, in our dreams, so to speak, <laughs> you know, become that better person. <laughs> yeah. That's all I got. Yeah, and battle school, not even in the sense of, like, war, just in the sense of, like, tactical training and everything. Actually, that's one idea. I mean, just to, like, segue this and just talk about crazy stuff for the last couple of seconds. Like, that's one thing that, I mean, I love dreams. I love talking about dreams. I love being my dreams more. And uh, that will be something that I'm going to be getting more back into the habit of doing is the video dream logs. But I love the idea that dreams in themselves can be like training simulation programs. So you can actually train yourself in like martial arts in your dream, even if you're just like doing it as a meditation first. And, and as you're falling asleep, try doing that. Try like meditating a scene where you're like fighting ninjas and doing like Jet Li stuff and, and Bruce Lee stuff. And then just like see if that segues you into your dream. And then, cause I've definitely done that. I've definitely done like parkour training, ninja training, Dragon Ball Z training, I've done that in my dream, but I would just love to be able to do it more consistently and more regularly and then <laughs> see how that plays out into real life. What would you use to what type of training what type of training would you guys do in your dream? Like Phil, do you do you play do you play instruments in your dream, Phil? Does that happen often? Yes. Uh, the music in my dreams are Interesting. Uh, some it's very rare, but sometimes I'll just have dr music in my dreams that is beyond anything I've heard in real life. And uh, 
Mm-hmm. I would like to talk about this one silly dream that I had. Uh, I had a dream where Laura Eisenhower and uh, her her partner, um, Dr. Dream, or Mark mm-hmm. Kugler, they were my parents, and I was a teenager, and we were driving uh. around a station wagon uh, that was full of stuff like we were moving, and uh, we were somehow in New Jersey, and there was like this big city in New Jersey, and for some reason the Mall of America was in this city in New Jersey. I don't know where the Mall of America it really is, but um, it had this weird statue that was kind of moving outside. It was kind of like a, a higher dimensional statue, you know, something that was moving by still being still. Um, and in the dream... I was trying to find a a reverse osmosis water dispenser to fill up my glass jug, and I took it to the guy, and the guy's looking at it to see if it has the label that says, do not refill, and I was, like, having an argument with him, being like, what, you're such a robot, you would actually not fill this if there was a label on it that says, do not refill? (laughs) (laughs) My dream. Water is life. That was funny. Yeah, definitely. Water is a good thing to sort of do a reality check around. If you notice that there's water in your dream, just double check. Just like try and if you see water during the day, just like ask yourself whether you're dreaming or not. <clears throat> so then when you see it in a dream, because it does, it, do, it is like here and there in dreams. Yeah, no, water is life. Super symbolic. Cool. All right. Okay. Within the last uh, two minutes of the show, I will mention for everybody who's listening to this next week. Um, thank you for tuning in for this week. You, <laughs> even if the pace was a little bit slower, uh, not every episode is like this, so to speak. And and I'm really excited to share with you that next week we'll be having a really awesome filmmaker on by the name of Rack Razum. He's an Australian fellow, and he made a very interesting documentary movie about his. Per- is working with ayahuasca and ayahuasca is something we've talked about in the past but we're going to be talking about it again and he's got a new book that's coming out and you can check that out at ayathebook.com a-y-a thebook.com and also his main website which is aya-awakening.com and uh, yeah looking forward to that episode that one will be really exciting to see the conversation that comes out of that and again Please like the Facebook pages and contribute to the show. Any sort of donation will get you access to the bonus content. And uh, looking forward to creating and sharing that with you and getting some support behind there that will add to the collective momentum. And uh, yeah. So, guys, um, any last words? Sweet. Uh, Good morrow, (laughs) Samurai. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. So continue to find that balance between the head and the heart. I think it's just like a decent reminder in itself. So learn to listen with your heart and uh, learn to speak with it as well. So we'll end it there. Thank you once again, everybody, for tuning in. You can add me at facebook.com slash skullbabble and paradigmshiftcentral.com. Guys, join me in saying farewell to the Internet. So bye, Internet. Bye, Internet. Peace and love. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to another episode of Paradigm Shift Radio. If you enjoy this show and would like to support it and would like to get more engaged with your local community, then consider ordering some Paradigm Shift buttons. Go to ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash buttons. And of course, if you'd like even more bonus content, join up as a PSR Plus member at ParadigmShiftCentral.com slash PSR Plus. Thank you. <laughs>